next morning I went inside, expecting something exciting to happen. The old druid said nothing while I was eating my breakfast. He only spoke when I sat up from the table, wondering what I should do. Well then, time for you to go do some listening again, no? I was both surprised and a bit disappointed to hear that. But I already know how to... Yes, so now you can actually start inspecting your surroundings. Knowing how to read doesn't mean you already know what's in a book. I turned towards the door. So, back to that glade it is then. He put his hand on my shoulder. That place was just where you were supposed to learn the means. If you go there, you'll find that it's actually rather boring. Not much to listen to in there. I turned to look at him again, expecting him to tell me what to do. I suggest you take a walk. Just move around and listen. You'll find that there's plenty to hear. Then he let go of me. When I was about to leave through the door, he interrupted me once more. Now, I know that this will be much more interesting than sitting in that grove, but I'll still be expecting you to lunch in a few hours. From that point onward, the daily routine continued as it was before except that I walked around while listening to my surroundings, instead of sitting in one place. It went on for weeks, no, months. I still always stayed at the cottage when he went to town. And eventually came the day I turned five. The first thing I thought about that morning was that I'd been living with the old druid for almost a year. Yet, it seemed as if the attack on Orbidin had happened at least half a decade ago. So different were things. I don't know if I ever told him about it or what, but when I went inside for breakfast, he seemed to know that it was my birthday. Oh, there you are. I have something for you. From his robes, he pulled out a large green jewel, about twice the size of my fist, and handed it to me. I didn't think for a second that he'd given me a real valuable jewel. Thank you. What is it? I asked as I inspected its smooth surface. Well, it doesn't really know a name but it's something that allows you to communicate with me. But I can talk to you any time I like, right? Well, under normal conditions, yes. But you'll eventually go your own way, and you might want to contact me from a great distance. Or I might not always be accessible, like that time when you fell down into that hole, remember? You mean I can speak to you with this even if I'm on the other side of the world? To put it simple, yes. He retrieved some breakfast from the kitchen and laid on the table. That's not all, however. I must say, you seem to have progressed quite well since you came here. So I thought today we'd see if we can do something more than just listen. I think my eyes widened as I braced myself to hear what he was going to say next. Hmm, I see you're eager to start. But we should really eat something first, he said and smiled, then started eating his food. Once we were done eating, he led me outside into a seemingly random spot in the woods. No. One of the most simple things a druid can do is accelerated growth. I didn't quite understand what he said. Judging by what he said next, he could see it on my face. 
Usually, it can be seen as making trees and plants grow quick, creating entangling vines and other useful tricks. Now, druids also possess the power to heal living things. I think you know about that, don't you? I nodded. I had heard a number of stories about druids and villains, from both my parents and him. Now, what most people don't realize is that both of these are based on the same principle. When a druid heals his wounds or tends to another's injury with his powers, he is in fact only accelerating that creature's natural regeneration. All living things do regenerate over time. Like when you get a cut on your hand, you know that it'll no longer be there a few days later, because your body constantly heals itself if it's damaged. I was struggling to grasp everything he had said, but managed to stay on the ball. He lowered his voice a bit when he continued speaking. That is also the reason why the dead can't be healed by our means of magic. A dead creature's body is no longer functioning, thus there is no natural regeneration to accelerate. He looked at me and saw the highly concentrated look on my face. Uh, probably enough theoretics for now. This is something you learn by doing, anyway. As silly as it may sound, we spent the first half of the day there with him trying to show me how to grow new branches on a small young tree. As our time was beginning to end and we prepared to leave, I felt something in my fingertips on my last try at it. I had a strong feeling I'd succeed the next day. What we did after having lunch also changed. The old druid told me I couldn't learn much more about writing and reading just by listening to his instructions. So instead of what we had done so far, he gave me a book from his shelf to read, saying, My apologies for selecting for you, but I believe this would be a good one to start with, as it's relatively simply written and all in Darnation. Even though it took me a few hours just to wade through the first four pages or so, I was instantly interested in what I was reading. From what I could tell so far, the book was written by some ancient druid who wished to share his experiences of the Emerald Dream by writing about them. All in all, one thing that didn't change about our daily routine was how we spent our evenings. He always had more stories to tell, and I can't recall a day when I wouldn't have taken a bath in the pond before going to sleep. The next day proved me right. I was able to affect the tree's growth, even if not as much as what was asked for. However, instead of moving on to more difficult things, he told me to keep practicing what I had learned so far. That continued for about a week, during which I think I made rather good progress. Then he started to tell me about herbs and other useful things that could be found in nature. Overall, I was living quite a fine youth at that time. The day I turned six, he had a present for me again. It was a brown leather pouch hanging on what was actually a leather belt, but since the belt was measured for an adult, I wore it so that it would be hanging from my shoulder, and it fit quite fine that way. He said it was meant for collecting herbs, although I found it a good way to carry around the green gemstone, which was still a bit sizable for me. Also, instead of studying more about herbs just by reading, he told me to take walks in the forest and collect what I could identify. I found it a good time to practice my other skills along the way. I guess I could write a small eternity about those times, but it wasn't really anything more than more of those normal days filled with studying.